Lathwaite's Wine are proud sponsors of the Telegraph's Vaughney and Tuffers Cricket Club. As the official wine partner of England cricket, Lathwaite's Wine are supporting the grassroots game with rewards for clubs where you can earn kit for your club, save 20% on wine and win prizes. Visit lathwaite.co.uk slash cricket for more details. The ECB um, to try and encourage NFL owners to invest in the 100. They've had to send them a video of what cricket is. <laughs> I, I, I would suggest that if you're having to sell a video about the game, yeah. I'd, be, I'd be doubtful that the NFL owners are going to really want to get their uh, checkbooks out. Away for another Vaughan boundary. <laughs> well, he's a great fieldsman, Philip Tapner. He often falls over and he's brought it into his batting as well. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Vaughan and Tuffers Cricket Club, a podcast brought to you by The Telegraph. My name is Ben Wright and I'm joined as always by Michael Vaughan and Phil Tufnell. England achieved a second win in their second test against West Indies, but they were made to fight far harder for it at Trent Bridge than they were at Lords. The two sides went toe-to-toe for the best part of four days. The Windies looked like they were getting to grips with the conditions and batted really well in their first innings. It required a collection of strong performances from the England players. Pope, Root and Brook all hit very classy centuries, but ultimately it was show of Bashir's 5 for 41 at the end of the fourth day that was the difference between the two sides. We'll be talking about all of that. Plus the Cricket Club scoreboard returns. The guys will discuss who looks the part and who must try harder. Mike, Phil, how are you both? Um, been quite a summer of sports already, but we've got the Olympics starting on Friday. Uh, I assume you're looking forward to that. Are there any uh, favourite events you'll be uh, making sure you're watching? Yeah, no, looking forward to the Olympics. It's one of those fantastic things that comes round, isn't it? You know, iconic is the word. Um, I'll be glued to all sorts of sports, really. I find myself sort of watching weird sports, you know what I mean, that I don't particularly know too much about and um, and sort of like critiquing them and sort of, you know, getting right into them. So uh, I think we've got a good chance in a lot of things. So, yeah, going to be glued to the TV watching that. Can't wait. How about you, Mike? Yeah, I mean, I can't wait. I, I always get excited about the Olympics. As, as Phil says, a few sports that you don't necessarily... Um, get to see too often on television. Looking forward to the breakdancing. Uh, I think that'd be a good event. Uh, I have to say, I was, I was reading about the uh, Great Britain, um, like the team camp and their hub of what they've got in it and all this food that gets delivered by Aldi. They deliver all the food. Um, these beds that have been specifically made and they're all different for every different kind of athlete. And then what staggered me, the 20,000 condoms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, it's a lot. Well, I think I've I've read about this before in previous Olympics. You have lots of uh, fit young people in the prime of their life. Uh, once the event is over, they tend to go slightly bonkers. So you're saying once they've done their event, they then get stuck in and they stay a little bit longer just to enjoy the Olympics. Perhaps they're blowing them up sort of as balloons just in case we win a gold medal and they can sort of be released. Oh, right. oh yes, I, I see, Phil. Yeah, you're going for the celebration-style balloon <laughs> that the 20,000 condoms have been sent for. Right, to the cricket then. Um, the West Indies, in the last episode, Carlos Brathwaite told us that the tourists were going to get better the longer the series went on and that sort of... Seems to have been the case, doesn't it, Mike? Yeah, I mean, it, it was a test match for uh, three days and two sessions. Um, the West Indies went toe-to-toe with the England side. Brathwaite made a brave call at the toss, decided to bowl first. If they'd have caught on day one, they'd have bowled England out for, mm. what, 280-300. They then batted beautifully in their first innings. They get that lead, they get the early breakthrough of Zach Crawley. And then their bowlers just didn't get it right. And I have to say, the England uh, batting performance in the second inning, under a bit of pressure... They played that, that kind of pressure card brilliantly. You know, uh, Pope and Duckett at the start, then Joe Root just went out. It was inevitable as soon as he walked out there on a good, good pitch that he was going to get 100. And in Harry Brook, we have a, a player that's very, very special. You know, I just think we're going to yeah. get so much joy over the next few years watching Harry Brook play. The way that he just makes stroking a ball pretty much 360 looks so easy. You know, the yeah. one area, that, and, and it's, I don't think he's got a problem with the short ball. I just think it's the one area that I would target him with because I think you can control your field. 
maybe re restrict him from scoring really quickly. And he does take it on. And obviously, it's not easy taking on the short ball all the time. So that is the area that I would kind of target him. Um, but England, with that pressure card of the second innings with the bat in hand, when they came out to bowl in the second innings, the West Indies come out of the traps, play great. You think, all right, 60, 61 for naught. It's still 320-odd to get to win the game. And from nowhere, uh, I'd not seen a Clipso Collapso coming. <laughs> And it was one of the yeah. greatest. It was one of the greatest of all time that they just went. It was just a, a pack of cards that went so quickly. Brilliance of the seamers, the pace of Wood, how he didn't get six or seven wickets is beyond me. And then obviously to see a spinner, uh, the first spinner since 2006, uh, Murray Litherin yeah. there at Trent Bridge to get a fifer. And he's obviously the youngest ever English bowler, Shari Bashir, to, to get a five wicket haul in a test match in the UK, surpassing Jimmy Anderson. No idea what year it was from Jimmy, but Shoaib Bashir uh, is the youngest ever now. So a wonderful week for him. Yeah, amazing. And Phil, um, I mean, lots there to unpack, but let's let's start with the West Indies. A better batting performance, especially in that, that first innings, not so much in the second innings. But um, watching it, what do you think that they had improved on? Well, I, I just think that they'd realised that you, you can get over sort of spells. I mean, as you said, Mike's right. I mean, how Mark Wood didn't get a wicket, I can't really think got one wicket. You know, how he didn't get five for it, I do not know, because he was bold in the speed of light, um, getting the ball to swing and 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 the West Indies they they just seem to sort of like look past that and say hold on a minute we can get him out you know but let's get rid of him on, on this spell you know and then let's move on you know when before round it looked a little bit like oh the ball's seeming around a little bit one's got our name on it and another one kind of goes but they kind of they batted in stages if you know what I mean and they could sort of they, they could they could see that they could overcome um, the England bowling, if they just applied themselves and got stuck in. I mean, Hodge was fantastic at doing that. I mean, he was absolutely peppered, but then didn't play the rash shot, didn't just have a wild hack thinking, you know, he can't get any more runs. He got stuck in, and that's what you've got to do at test matches. You've got to get these kind of bowlers into their second and third spells, and the ball gets older, and it becomes slightly easier, um, and that's what they sort of had. So I think it was a different sort of change of mindset for the West Indies, uh, and then as Mike says in the in the second dig, they they just fell in a heap. Um, but uh, no, there was some there was some good positive signs uh, for the West Indies, and that was mainly about you know get that partnership, get to twenty, get to forty, get to sixty, and then you know you you can achieve a, a decent first innings total, and they did that brilliantly in the first innings. Yeah, and Mike, who who were the standout performers for you from the West Indies? Obviously that. That partnership between Hodge and Athenais was 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 key for them. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Alec uh, Athenais yeah. is a a player with a with a quite a large ceiling. I think he looks like a a real gifted uh, young left hand handed player. Uh, he'll be gutted not to have got the three figures because he's got to start again. Obviously, in the second innings, he didn't get too many, and then obviously Edge Baston, you start on naught again. But if he can kind of just tell himself that, you know, whatever the pitch is like, you've still got to get the runs. And it was flat in that first innings. But he he whist, withstood that, that spell from Mark Wood. You know, he probably faced it a couple of times with, with the peppering and the pace. And he came through that brilliantly. Um, you know, Kevin Hodge is a technically very correct player uh, who counterpunched. I, I think at Laws we were all a bit fearful of the West Indies. They, they didn't have a enough quality to counter punch even on a good pitch I don't think many of us gave them uh, much hope but we saw that at Trent Bridge yeah. that they could do that and Joshua De Silva down the back end England's tactics down the, the end of that first innings were very strange you know to spread the field to Joshua De Silva and Shamar Joseph was very very odd and then obviously to bring Joe Root on and he got pummeled for I think 16 or 18 in one over um, yeah so that was the only part of the test match where I thought well wait a minute this because this England side played so positively that I'd, yeah. love to, I'd love to see Ben. And, and look, when I was a captain, you do spread the field at the back end. And I look back at my time and think, I don't think it's the right decision. There's every yeah. now and again it is, but I reckon 80 to 90% of the time, the right decision to maybe have a couple of boundary riders, but keep your bowlers bowling the best ball with the fielders, not completely up, but at least 70% of the fielders in a normal position. When the ball's moving around, trying to hit the ball down the ground, it's not easy. And the ball was moving around. And I think of any captains that I've watched that I thought might be a bit more uh, aggressive, if you like, if that situation yeah. arose, 
Uh, I would say that Ben Stokes would be the captain. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I mean, it's very unlike him as a captain to to spread the field. Yeah, it, it always make, it always makes me laugh that you've got sort of like numbers one to five come in and um, they sort of look round and Mark Wood's bowling or, you know, one of the seamers bowling and they've got three, maybe four slips. And then sort of like 10 and 11 come in and everyone's on the boundary. <laughs> you know, there's not a slip. There's not a slip to be seen. I used to come in. There used to be about that. There used to be a whole tribe of them behind me, about 10 of them behind me. So it, it, it is a strange tactic. I mean, you can it can lure you into sort of like giving away a hell of a lot of runs, actually. And I think they've got to look at that. Perhaps that's one thing that England perhaps aren't very good at, which is a, which is surprising with, with, with the likes of Mark Wood, in, in, in being able to blow away a tail, the likes of Wazim Akram, Wakar Yunus, Kirtley Ambrose, Courtney Walsh. These, it is a bit of a skill, you know, because, you know, the tail come in and they sort of back away and it goes everywhere and you can sort of start chasing the ball around a tad. And uh, and England were, were guilty of that a little bit at the end. But take nothing away from Shamar Joseph. Actually, he played pretty well. <laughs> just one thing as well, just going back to England's knock. Um, you're talking about Harry Brook and, you know, I mean, and that is... I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, Joe Root, one of the most elegant players, you know. But when when Harry and 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 Rooty were out there together, you know what I mean. It was, it was almost difficult to see who was the better back, who was the better player. And it, and in some sort of instances, I thought that Harry Brook almost sort of like was jumping ahead of Joe Root. You know what I mean. And Joe's a beautiful player, but the power and the way he just seemed so unflappable. Uh, it was amazing. You know, he's just gone out there. England were wobbling a little bit. You know, they could have been in a bit of trouble. And he's just gone out. And I think third ball, he's just gone smack straight back past the bowler. It was a fabulous knock. Really was. Oh, he, he's special. Um, you know, it, I think in your career, you, you, you can clearly see he can play. He's done it in Pakistan. That's his first 100 here in the UK. He's going to come up against better attacks. You know, the yeah. Indian attack next summer, Australia away from home so there, there, there's loads of kind of steps of the ladder uh, when you start playing test match cricket but oh, I, I'll go back to Kevin Peterson who could go out and bat and, and put any bowler under pressure uh, hit boundaries from pretty much any position in three or four different parts of the ground so you can bowl a, an off stump ball to Harry Brook I think he can get you on the onside the offside he can deflect it down the third if he wants to he can probably play the ramp um, Oh, he's, he's right up there. As you say, there'll be other challenges, but he's played some good sides. He's already got a test average that is second only to Don Bradman. He's just been elevated to, to third in the ICC rankings. So, I mean, he's done pretty well already, hasn't he? Oh, he's, cla- he's, he's, he's a class <laughs> yeah, act. Absolutely. He's a class act, yeah. but, you know, yeah. you know that it, your career, at the end of it, you're defined by, obviously, your end numbers, but... You know, yeah. to get to those numbers and to get yourself into that position of being talked about as a great, great player, um, you have to do it against the best teams in the world. And that's at the minute, India and Australia. And if you can go over to Australia and smack them to all parts and be a part of an England side that uh, gets those ashes back, um, you know, that's very, very special. I do look at this England batting lineup, and again, we're always looking ahead, you know, and it's that kind of summer that I don't think England will get challenged a huge amount. I think they should win every test match. I think in the winter they'll get challenged a little bit more, but it all comes down to next year against India and Australia. And I do look at this England batting lineup, and I like the way that they play for Australian conditions. Yeah. I think they all play the drive well, and they're all very strong on the back foot. And that's exactly what you require in Australia. You've got to be able to drive good length, and you've got to be able to put the bowlers under a bit of pressure on the back foot to kind of not allow them just to always bowl short to you. And I think every like they've got a bit of recklessness in them, but I think the style of players that they're picking, you can clearly see. And that goes down to Shoaib Bashir as well, the spinner. It's because of that extra bounce and that height. England are picking now for what's going to happen next year. You can clearly see there's a vision. And I love that in sport when you can see that they've got this plan. You know, if you go into a big series without a plan and just get there and, you know, oh, that, what's the eleven? I think you'll come unstuck. I think you can clearly see now that this England side is starting to think about how can we retain those ashes back in a year and a half time. It's uh, it's quite visible from uh, the selections. And and, and, that, and that's happened on, on a number of occasions when we've gone over to Australia, haven't it? Do you remember, you know, who's going to play the first test match? Virtually 
the morning of the test match, the team is completely different. I mean, it's ridiculous. And I think it's a great point. And it's the same with Jamie Smith, who I thought has kept really well. Uh, he kept nicely to Bashir as well. And so you're right, Mike. I think they're, they're putting together all these sort of cogs and a method and a style of play um, which is, as you say, throwing forward to the future in Australia. And I think that also that it's just, they've tweaked the so-called baseball way a tad as well, haven't they? You know, they've just dialed it down a touch, I think. And so, yeah, it's all looking pretty good, I reckon. You know, the likes of Atkinson bowling, Woods bowling fast, can Joffre Archer get back into that team as well? Yeah, it's looking good. They're, they're coming together and also the style of play is coming together, uh, which is looking really good for England. Calling all cricket fans. This is a special shout out for Lathwaite's Wine, the proud sponsors of the Telegraph's Vaughan and Tuffers Cricket Club. As the official wine partner of England cricket, Lathwaite's isn't just about supporting the professionals, it's backing the grassroots game too, with rewards for clubs. With rewards for clubs, you can earn kit for your club, save 20% on their fantastic wines and stand a chance of winning epic prizes. Lathwaite's has an incredible range of wines, from rich, bold reds to crisp, refreshing whites and everything in between. Perfect for any occasion. Lathwaite's goes further to find the best wines across the globe. So, get ready for a great delivery, on and off the pitch. Visit lathwaites.co.uk slash cricket for more details and raise a glass to great cricket and great wine. Yeah, you mentioned KP in relation to, to Brooke, but actually with Jamie Smith, when I look watching him bat, I mean, obviously not quite in the same class, but he's tall, he crouches down low, he's got that high back lift. He's got a bit of a look of KP about him as well, hasn't he? Yeah, and, and he hits it hard. I, I think he's more of a... Uh, a rigid player. That's not a bad thing. It's just the way that he plays. He he kind of hits it very strong through the offside. I think Brooks got those wrists, you know, that Kev used yeah, to have. He yeah. like just got um, kind of wrists that can almost bend backwards. Um, yeah, England have got a a, a batting line. Oh, ben Stokes played nicely in the first innings. It was good to see the skipper yeah. uh, getting a bit of form. The key to England's batting is Joe Root. Yeah. And Joe Root, if you go back to that reverse ramp that he played against Bumrah uh, in India uh, when the game was hot, you know, you, you go back to that. He's played it, what, once since? But when he was on 100, you know, I think yeah. he's now realised... He's, fi he's figured out where he, how he should play within the basketball. Well, I just think he's the up. key. He's the key, and we, we, we've spoken about it many times over the last few years, is that... You know, for the basketballers to play the aggressive way, absolutely no problem whatsoever with the natural aggressive players. But Joe Root did not need to change anything. He averages 50 in test cricket, nearly at 12,000. Uh, he's so consistent playing the Joe Root way, and that's been over the course of many, many years. And whether England have had a word with him or whether he's had a word with himself, I'm actually not bothered. But from what yeah. I've seen this summer, Joe's back playing, and he did towards the back end of the Indian trip, just playing the Joe Root way. You know, in, yeah. in 10 or 15 years' time, I'll guarantee there will be a Joe Root batting way for all kids to follow, boys and girls, hopefully for the next couple of generations. And it'll be through technical, real kind of uh, old school methods with a bit of the modern touch. And give me any player in the world playing the Joe Root way than any other way. I think he's an absolute delight to watch. Yeah, he is. I mean, he obviously went uh, eighth in the chart of leading run scorers in Tess, overtook Chanderpool. Um, I saw an amazing stat that showed he has more runs than Tendulkar did after 140 tests. Obviously, Tendulkar started very young, went on to 200 tests. Um, whether Joe plays that many, I don't know. But, Mike, you talk to him loads. What ambitions does he have left? Um, and how many runs do you think he could end up making? I, I, I mean, I, I speak to him a bit, but not, not a huge amount. I just think he loves the game. I think enthusiasm is... a uh... Uh, a word that we don't use often enough about professional sport and to play at the top look at Jimmy Anderson he had to get pushed out of the way because he's so enthusiastic about playing the yeah. game 
Um, Joe Root won't get pushed out the way as a batter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was about to ask. No. <laughs> Seems unlikely. I, I, I generally think he, if he stays fit and his back stays strong, and that'll be the key, um, I, I think we're, we're going to see him get very, very close to Sachin's record. He might have to avoid going to India because they might they might see him off over there if he gets close to Sachin's record. <laughs> 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 he might yeah. have to avoid that trip. But um, look, he's he's young enough. He's playing well enough. Um, sports funny that you you can't predict too much what's going to happen in two or three years time. But if he stays fit for the next three years, three and a half years, you know, with the way that he's been scoring, um, yeah, I, I think we'll be creating something very very special in. Uh, in the UK, and that'll be Joe Root getting past Sachin's record. I, I think also something about Joe Root is that he also he, he talks about wanting to improve. You know, every day he's in the nets, his work rate. He wants to get better and better and better. And now, you know, Joe Root could take his foot off the gas a little bit, really, but he doesn't. He, he want he wants to keep improving, and that is such a mark of someone who is going to ob- ob- obtain greatness. I think there is a stat knocking about that if he carries on for about the next four and a half years at the run the scoring and the averages that he's got, he will go past Tendulkar. So um, I'm sure that that's somewhere in the back of yeah. his mind. And Phil, uh, we, sh- we need to talk about Bashir. He obviously bowled really well in that, that final innings, but he bowled pretty well in the first innings as well when the, when the wicket was a bit flatter. Yeah, no, um, he's got all the tools, hasn't he? He's got these massive hands. <laughs> he's got these massive hands. I keep banging on about it, but I wish I had had fingers like that. You know, so, and, and obviously he's about six foot five, uh, but he can really get that ball in and give it a really good rip. He's got a nice short delivery stride, which means he bowls from this sort of high release point, which means he can bowl into the pitch on, on a flat sort of pitch, and which which means it's quite difficult to come down to. And then as the pitch sort of like deteriorates and wears and footholds come along, he also has that ability to just get that up and down as well and that dip and that drop. Um, also, I, I think he's got that spinner's attitude. You know, he's got, he, he doesn't mind going for the odd four or six as, as, as they, he showed the West Indies sort of put a couple on him and, and he and then comes back wanting to take wickets. He didn't seem sort of frightened of trying to board the old one a little bit up there, you know what I mean? If you get hit for a boundary, you know what I mean? So he's got that attitude that he wants to take wickets uh, and he, I think he's a great prospect, you know. As you say, he's got all the attributes, changes his pace nicely, changes his flights nicely as well. He's got a good intelligence, you know. For someone who's played very little cricket, he's got quite a, you know, a, a, a spinner's brain, actually, you know. He's obviously sort of worked out a little bit because he was playing with the lines and the lengths, where he was bowling from on the creases as well. Um, and I just liked that he, he, in the first innings he was bowling it a little bit straighter, perhaps sort of like off stump, middle and off stump. And then second innings, when it was just starting to take a little bit of turn, it just looked very natural for him just to come to about fourth stump. And just to start testing them, trying to get the inside edges and bowl through the gates and outside edges. We bowled a beauty to um, to Jason Holder that just went past the outside edge. So I think he's got that intelligence very quickly and he looks like a quick learner. He bowled beautifully. Simple as that. He'll have tougher challenges, that's for sure. But... Um, yeah, I mean, the ingredients are all there. And we keep banging on about high ceilings. Well, he's going to need one because he's about six foot five. And when he sort of like bowls it, when he bowls it, he's, he's coming down from about seven or eight foot. So, um, yeah, uh, he'll be absolutely delighted with that. And the confidence it gives you as a spinner to get fivers and be a part of a match winning sort of, uh, uh, you know, being the, one of the main reasons you won that match, you bowled a side out in the fourth innings, which can mess with you mentally a little little bit I think he'll he'll just he'll fly from that yeah yeah he doesn't have much of a delivery jump does he so which is just as well because otherwise he'd be coming down from about 12 feet well no absolutely but I mean that 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 is your delivery stride and one thing that I used to get wrong when you get a bit tired or you start pushing for it your delivery stride sort of widens a little bit which means you collapse and you don't get through your pivot and you don't get up and over the top but he's got that sort of like dinky little delivery stride but then still has that quick arm to sort of like get that drop and spin yeah he's got all the tools to become uh, you know a really good test cricketer yeah and Mike there were a couple of question marks over his selection ahead of the first test do you think uh, that decision's been vindicated yeah I mean I, I, look, it's, it's very early days but you can only do what's in front of you he's now got three five wicket hauls in, in five yeah. test matches he's got two in India and alright it spins in India but 
they're pretty good players of spin. <laughs> you know, they, yeah. they like to um, pretty much whack the spinning ball. And, you know, he's got two fifers over there against quality. And he's now got a, a five-wicket haul the second time of asking, but he didn't bowl at Lords. So the first time he's had a bowl in a test match, he gets a five. He was under a little bit of pressure from the first innings because I think most of us watched and thought, oh, it looks a little bit straight and pretty much to the right hand. There's just that, you know, not round the corner length. But in the second innings, and I only ever judge finger spinners in particular in England in the second innings when there's just a little bit there. You know, there's always a little bit of a foothold and the pitch, which is always generally slow down and you get a little bit of purchase. And in the second innings, he was magnificent. That that ball that got Jason Holder when he just released it, almost like a, a slider. It yeah. was a wonderful skill. And, and you know, Jeetan Patel, the, the spin bowling coach, said to me one morning, look, look, he's got everything. He's got all the tricks. He just, you know, in the first innings, he, he didn't need to use them. He didn't feel that it was right. But when he gets conditions in his favour, uh, he's got all the tricks and the ammo, which is, is great for him. And again, you're going forward to next year. And that's a, a big tick. I, I wouldn't, at this stage, be so confident that it's going to get better and better and better because, you know, you just don't know where these young players end up. But he, he can only do as well as he's done so far. And to get three in five, and let's be honest, he's, he's got a great chance this summer. You know, Edge Baston, it'll probably spin again. Then three test matches yeah. against Sri Lanka. And that'll be a really good challenge because I think Sri Lanka will bring better players of spin. And that'll be a better challenge for him to see how, how much he is progressing to, to bowl against a Sri Lankan batting line, particularly in the first innings here in the UK where there won't be a great deal for him. Um, is he the real deal? I think, I think he could possibly be, yeah. But there's a long way to go before we start thinking about how great he could be. But from everything that he has and, and what we've seen so far, uh, he looks another really, really good selection. It's about, and we are throwing it forward, we seem to be doing that quite a lot now. In those first innings is, can you hold up an end? Can you allow the seamers to rotate? That's what he's going to have to learn. He did it pretty well uh, 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 at Trent Bridge, but that's what he's going to have to learn. And that can only come, that only comes with a bit of experience and, uh, and balls bold and being in those situations. You know, can he turn up at Brisbane, get thrown the ball just after lunch on the first day and say, can you go for two and a half, three and over? You know what I mean? And get me a couple of wickets somehow and stay us in the and keep us in the game. So that's going to be his next big test. Um, he obviously gives it a good tweak. He's got good variations. Yeah, yeah. good luck to him. I think he's a prospect. Um, looking forward to the third test. Um, England obviously playing well. West Indies getting better. Are you looking forward to that, Mike? Yeah, I mean, it, it, I think it'll be another good pitch. Um, look, I, I don't expect Edge Baston to be like the first test at Lords where... Uh, England completely blow uh, the West Indies away. The, the one concern I'll have for the West Indies, when the ball does anything, whether it's swing, seam, up and down, bounce, uh, a bit of spin, three of the four innings so far in the series, they've been bowled out very quickly and cheaply. So they've had one good score out of four, and that was when the pitch was at its flattest. Um, so if there's yeah. any lateral, I think they'll get bowled out. If there's any spin, I think they're going to get bowled out. Um, I, I just hope they can... They can understand that being 61 for naught in the second innings, controlling a, a chase with, with, with good stroke play, you know, they're, they're a better team than being blown away in the next, what, hour and a half. They're, they're better than that. And that's just a bit of panic and a, a bit of a mindset issue that the, uh, the West Indies have at the minute. Um, but from where they were at Lords to where they were at Edge Baston, it was a drastic improvement. It really yeah. was. And I think the whole game and test cricket in general, we hope they can improve for the next game as well. And giving them even more of a push at edge Baston. I, I, I'd be surprised if that happened. I'll, I'll be honest. I think England will get better and it might be a tricky week for the West Indies. OK, Phil, so I think you've got the Cricket Club scoreboard there. Uh, we've got a few faces up already from last week uh we're going to introduce a few more but let's start with the ones we've already got on the board um obviously in the uh, the first test at lords gus atkinson had a uh, great performance there um bowled pretty well it didn't get quite the return he did at lords but uh, does he does he deserve to slip down the rankings or do we keep him where he was well i think he's got a slip well, down I, slightly. I, I think he did pretty well I, mean, he did I get, think he did pretty well. Yeah, perhaps him slipping. He did get 12 wickets, which is hard to 
match yeah. every week. But I actually loved the way that he bowled when the ball reverse swung a little bit in the second innings. Yeah. Where he got a few Just back into Just knock him down a bit, you reckon? Yeah. Only, Phil, you're talking maybe two centimetres. He still yeah, had a good He's got to come down a bit. He, he didn't get a 12-foot. Yeah. Who else have we got on there? Seals. Let's do Seals for the West Indies. He got a few wickets, didn't he? But he, he wasn't at his best. No. No, no. He, he actually, I mean, he went for four boundaries in the first over that he bowled in the test match to Ben Duckett, and he bowled yeah. a really poor spell at the start of the second innings when the West Indies were on top. He may yeah. have got a, a few wickets yeah. later, but it was almost a, when it was too late. So I think yeah. he comes down for that. I'm bringing him down a little bit. Yeah, I think he comes yeah. down a little okay. bit. But you mentioned Duckett. He's on there. He's got to go up. I, I actually, because... He obviously got two in the 70s, so he didn't sort of cash in. He didn't get a ton like the others. But, boy, does he, does he set, the, set the pace for the, for the side, right? I mean, he was, he was, bass- he was going at over 100 in the, f- in the first innings and not much less in the second. So he's got, he's got what, like nearly 150 runs across the two innings. Yeah, he, he flies up the, uh, the, yeah. the, uh, the rails there. Get, get him halfway. He's not quite at Gussy, Phil, um, but he's, he's not far off. He had a great game. Next one, uh, Alzari Joseph. Oh, oh, he's having a bad trip. He's yeah. having a bad trip. He got, he got Zach going. Crawley in that he first doesn't. over. I'm not so sure. And then he bowled uh, LBW. He got Ben Duckett in the second inning. That was a good ball. I think he bowled a bit better than he did at Lords, though, Phil. Give him a boost. Get, get him up a little bit. All right. Fair enough. It wasn't, it wasn't great, but I think there he was go. better there than at go. Lords. So we got, we got some new names to think about, right? Yeah, Chris Wokes. Chris oh, Wokes, I think excellent. he bowled beautifully second innings. Deadly. Yeah, he was good. First innings was a bit slow to get into it, but second innings really came on, and I thought I think he should be up there just below, just, just above Ducky, I reckon. Yeah, good shout. He, he, bat, he batted OK as well. Yeah, well, I think, yeah, le- level. I think level's fair. Yeah. Yeah, that first innings, Chris Wokes, he just didn't quite get into his sort of stride, did he? But when he gets that... When he when he gets that shape going, and then he has the ability just to run one back into the pads, he's a he's a tricky bowler, a tricky bowler in English conditions to face. Okay, let's have a West Indian. Um, you've got Hodge there, have you? Kavim. Oh, the Hodge. Yeah, get Kavim him up there. Hodge. That was a brilliant. Go high, Atkinson. Uh, is he Atkinson level? I I would say so. It was also his, I didn't realise this. It was his maiden Test hundred, age thirty one. Which... Yeah. Brilliant innings. Um, yeah. No, he's a good player. He had a little bit of fortune, didn't he? Joe Root dropped him off Mark Wood, uh, Ooh, but yeah. he played. I reckon Athanas and Hodge played the short balls. You know, with the square field that England gets there. Yeah. I think mm. that combination played it better than I've seen any pair. Um, so that was good to see, and he's a great character. Yeah, yeah. So, so what are we doing? We're putting him level, level with Atkinson, or just a little bit down? Yeah, he didn't get too many in the second dig. I think he got naught in the second dig, didn't he? I'm just, just below yeah. Atkinson. All right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Here we go. Here we go. The man of the moment, Shoaib Bashir. Pretty hard to see how he could have done better, really. I think he goes just above Hodgie, Phil. He's won the yeah. game. Yeah, he's, just he's... above Hodgie. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he was the, well, he's the talk of the week. He, he bowled great, so he's got to be up there. Yeah. Uh, and last one, we've got De Silva. He seems like a potential West Indian captain to me. Uh, I think he's a, a, a great leader. Um, I think he's got loads of potential, looks a, looks a decent keeper, and, 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 and he looks a really solid player with the bat as well. So, yeah, I think he could be a skipper. Talking to Fazir, he said he's got um, a lot about him, this young man. He said he's got the potential to lead the, the, the West Indies in the future. Um, yeah, he, he did pretty well. What, Wokesy? Yeah, Just Wokesy, above Wokesy. Yeah, yeah. Wokesy. Had a good week, yeah, enjoyed him. Right, good scoreboarding, chaps. Good scoreboarding. <laughs> Before I let you go, uh, I need to know what has stumped you this week. So I'll start with you, Phil. Uh, what's stumped you? Yeah, I mean, a few things have stumped me. Um, we've, been going to, we've been going to Nottingham now, well, I have, for about 25 years, and they still haven't fixed that roundabout in the city centre. 35 years then, and they still haven't fixed that roundabout in the city centre. Come on, Nottingham, pull your finger out. Also, the place needs a lick of paint. Uh, and how about you, Mike? What stumped you? Well, I, I, I'm intrigued. I, look, I'm a big fan of the 100. I think it's a, a good format. And, and I think uh, clearly the ECB are trying to sell the 100 and uh, the franchise model to many, many uh, wealthy benefactors, whether it's the IPL team. But one thing that had me stumped this week, um, and it did make me chuckle, that we've got this product that we're trying to sell 
and apparently the ECB um, to try and encourage NFL owners to invest in the 100. They've had to send them a video of what cricket is. <laughs> I, I, I would suggest that if you're having to sell a video about the game, um, yeah. it's 11 versus 11. We play with a round ball. We have a piece of wood. I mean, if you're having to sell it, send a video to... And you're not selling these teams for £5.50. You're talking about millions and millions. Yeah. I'd, be, I'd be doubtful that the NFL owners are going to really want to get their uh, checkbooks out if you have to send a video to explain what cricket is first and foremost. Yes. Uh, and bear in mind that this is, this is the US is a country that uh, has just co-hosted the T20 World Cup. Yeah, that, that, that uh, had me a little bit stunned. But let, let's be honest, this, this sale process of the 100 ball teams, um, it's going to future-proof the game if they get it right. Yeah. But they have to get it right and they have to get the monies that we've been reading about, talking about, some of the people that they're uh, mentioning in terms of uh, interest in buying. You can go the Microsoft CEO, you've got Ryan Reynolds who owns yeah. Wrexham. Is he going to own the Welsh Fire? We'll have to yeah. wait and see. But fundamentally, you know, they've taught a big game in terms of numbers, millions and millions, hundreds of millions. Um, let's see if the video works. Brilliant. Thanks, chaps. If you think you can solve what has stumped Tuffers and Vaughney this week, or you've got some thoughts about the current series between England and the West Indies, then please do get in touch with us via email, cricketclub at telegraph.co.uk. That's cricketclub at telegraph.co.uk. Or on X, formerly known as Twitter, at telecricket. <laughs> That's all for this week. A huge thank you to Vaughnie and Tuffers. We're off for a few weeks now, but we'll be back in time for the first test against Sri Lanka in August. Until then, there's always our past episodes for you to catch up on. You can find them on the Vaughnie and Tuffers Cricket Club channel wherever you download your podcasts. Thank you for listening to this episode. Please do subscribe to make sure you don't miss any of the action. And if you've enjoyed it, please do leave a review. Until next time, goodbye. The Vaughan and Tuffers Cricket Club podcast is a listen production for The Telegraph. The producer is Aidan Judd. The executive producer for Listen is Nick Minter. The executive producer for The Telegraph is Giles Gear. With thanks to production coordinator Ryan Gudge, studio operator Megan Searle and videographer James England. Lathwaite's Wine are proud sponsors of The Telegraph's Vaughan and Tuffers Cricket Club. As the official wine partner of England cricket, Lathwaite's Wine are supporting the grassroots game with rewards for clubs where you can earn kit for your club, save 20% on wine and win prizes. Visit lathwaites.co.uk slash cricket for more details.